Hey there everybody, I'm Jade Starr and this is Borderlands. On today's episode we're going back through the Headstone Mine and then some of the resulting side quests uh, after Sledge is killed because um, last time their videos didn't come out so well. Um, ooh, I found some nice things. Ooh, it's in the area revolver. Nope, don't want it. Yeah, fuck you transfusions, but I hate them, but I will show them off. Wait, explosive contact, don't I? What do I got? Shock contact, hey. That's even better. That's like explosive, but with lightning. Anyway, so uh, I actually found some good guns on uh, my single playthrough. Uh, I've got this incredibly awesome flaming sniper rifle. This guy, which is kind of a little weird, but he's cool. And then a lightning revolver, hell yeah, which is why I didn't want the um, flaming revolver, because it does way more damage. So anyway, single player. Oh, fuck me. There we go. I was about to m mention some of the differences in single player. Making it much easier to snipe is primarily the one reason I enjoy much better, but then again, I just missed my first shot and look like a complete chump. Ooh, you got some tough shields. Eat it. I like this gun. Uh, so yeah, single player versus multiplayer. Uh, let's talk differences. Uh, enemies do a lot less damage individually, have a lot less health individually. And usually don't drop it in loot, because as the game says, tougher enemies, better loot. More players, tough, more uh, the enemies are tougher, better loot, etc. Don't you throw a grenade at me. But I also just find it's a lot easier to snipe, because uh, latency actually is kind of an issue. Uh, as someone pointed out in the, uh, in the thread, enemies are kind of dodgy. Like, they'll jump out of the way of, of a bullet as you shoot at them. Which is really, really kind of gay. But uh, less of an issue in sync. Oh, oh. One second. As I was saying, uh, that's less of an issue in single player when the response times are much better. Oh yeah, here's my little pistol. It's it's just a repeater, but it's actually kind of like a mini SMG. Uh, it's quick fire, pretty high damage. I like it. Um, so yeah, sniping becomes a lot easier for me in single player. Um, to the point where in multiplayer I'm probably going to focus less on sniping and more on the uh, pistol skill trees. And I will show you my skill tree just in a moment after I shoot that dick who interrupted me. Oh. There's quite a lot of dicks here, hold on. What? Oh, fuck you flag post. Oops. There we go. Shot contact. Okay. Uh, as you can see, I'm back to using a two-shot revolver because ha, 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 game sucks. Now, um, it's it's just more powerful, and the reload times are pretty quick, and uh, the hunter skill tree you can make them even shorter too. So, uh, sniping differences there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the big things I should mention is the elemental chances. Like my sniper rifle has a times three gun has a times three, which is all very awesome, but, ooh, hello, detonating sniper, nope, not quite as awesome. Uh, I should mention why those are so important, like, I think I posted uh, in the third video, I believe it was, I sold a detonating sniper because it didn't do uh, as much damage. Well, it probably would have, it just didn't have as high of a damage stat on the gun itself, and that was probably a huge mistake selling it. Um, because the damage, uh, the elemental chance does more than makes up for it, like 99% of the time. But, you gotta be careful which gun you're applying that to. Like, sniper rifles will almost always trigger their elemental chance. Uh, from what I read on the internet, the chance is actually based a little bit, uh, or entirely, on how long you uh, leave a sniper rifle scope. So the more you aim and scope a sniper rifle, the higher the elemental uh, trigger chance is. But to me, it's, it's been almost 100% no matter how much I scope it. Yeah. Um, revolvers are 100%, I believe. Um, I can't actually ever remember not seeing them trigger. See? So, elemental chances on revolvers definitely make up for slightly less damage. Oh, now I just alerted some baddies down there, didn't I? Oh, hey guys. In your face. Oh, I missed. Oh, oh, got him with the blast. Oh, oh, I love this gun. And it has a scope, too. This is an awesome gun. 
It's kind of annoying it only has two bu uh, two bullets per cylinder, I guess, I should say, since it's a revolver. But hey. Wish it was daytime. Fucking nighttime cycles. Oh, I can't see him through the cloud of his friend burning alive. Hey, get over here. Hmm, that is an inc wait, 500% burst fire count? Wait, 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 I wanna see what this does. Oh, it fires five, five bullets at once. Ooh, nice SMG. Too bad Chunky's never getting that. Hmm, I gotta, I like, oh, and it has a scope? And it stays accurate? Oh my goodness, I like this. I see this was 33, that's 32. Yeah, I might keep this. I've been finding a lot of repeaters I've actually wanted to use uh, in this single playthrough, which is surprising since I've always hated repeaters. You know, it occurs to me that I'm not keeping this character, I'm still looting every. Ooh, hello. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Uh, nope, that is good. Nope, not as good. Nope, definitely not as good. And nope, not as good. Okay. Well, it was worth a check. Alright. As I was saying that, uh... I'm not keeping this character, and yet I'm still looting everything like a, uh... OCD, I'm going to look for everything I can kind of person. I like this gun. I like it. It's like a mini battle rifle. Cool. Um, yeah, whatever. So, I, oh, I talked about elemental proc chances. Oh, barrel didn't get him. I do not know the formulas for the other guns, such as SMGs, shotguns, uh, rifles, so forth and so on. I do know that if a shotgun is going to uh, trigger, every one of the pellets in that shot is going to trigger. Also, I don't know why I didn't trigger at all on that bruiser. That's slightly disappointing. There it goes. Oops. So I guess it's not quite 100% on a sniper rifle. But it is in pretty, pretty high chance. Oh, wait, wait, wait. And let's find my transfusion grenade so I can show these off. And let's not try to show them off the stupid way. Come on, shoot me. Shoot me. More. Hurt me. Hurt me. This, by the way, is actually still the stupid way of showing them off. Hurt me more. Hurt me. Hurt me. Okay, thank you. Okay. Now that I don't have full health, I'm gonna go over here and loot something real quick. Nope. Complete crap. Now that I don't have full health, I'm gonna go kill this turret. I can shoot me. Shoot me. Okay, that's good. Now, enemies will appear over here, and we will throw transfusion grenades at them. Transfusion grenades will release these little white things that will then home in on the opponents, zap them, turn red, and then attempt to make their way back to me. Thus, stealing their health. I guess this would work better if I actually wasn't constantly still getting shot by them and losing health. Oh well. But that's that's transfusion grenades right there. They work pretty well in big, wide open areas like this, but when you start putting them into tight quarters, the little uh, homing bits uh, really start fucking up. And I tend to think that they're more trouble than they're worth. Uh, I did go through my first playthrough using like exclusively transfusions because, oh my god, health stealing grenades, awesome! But... I was slightly disappointed by them uh, when I realized how much more damage you can get done with like a real grenade. Yes, yeah, even here at point blank range, grenades had a little bit of trouble getting them uh, to the bruiser and back. And once I'm done with this douche, oh. uh, you know what? Fuck it. There we go. 
I will talk about my skill selections. And let me go show those. As you can see, I've kind of thrown a smattering of skills there, but my only concentration has been on gun crazy, which is the I fire two shots instead of one with a trigger pull. I'm not sure how that's going to react with this gun, if that's going to count since it fires in burst. Interesting. I would have to find that one out. Uh, Righteous Remedy is a great freaking skill for single player. Every time you kill something, your health starts regenerating. This is really, really awesome in single player because in single player, you are responsible for killing everything, meaning all of your upon enemy death skills trigger a lot more. I'm debating whether keeping it or not keeping it in multiplayer simply because uh, with three other jackasses running around, I score a lot less of the kills. Hmm. Oh, full. Full my ass. That's a very nice sniper rifle, and I would like to have it. Ooh, that's also a very nice shotgun. Anyway, um, yes, Righteous Remedy triggers health. Uh, finding less use for it in multiplayer when Chunky, Flime, or Shanks are out there shooting things as well, because then I trigger it less. Uh, also, then we also just have Shanks there to shoot everybody in the back and heal them with Carverize. Uh, moving on, what's my next one? Shh. Deadly increases critical hit damage, should be pretty self-explanatory for a hunter. Uh, Swift Strike increase, increases Bloodwing Strike damage and its movement speed. I find that if you don't put 5 points in damage into this thing, uh, then Bloodwing becomes kind of useless. Um, I mean, not that Bloodwing is the greatest action skill to begin with, but uh, without Swift Strike, he doesn't even like kill a normal enemy in one attack, and you only get one attack out of them every like 30 seconds or so. So if you pump it up to full, it kind of becomes like a, a grenade, a free grenade every 50 seconds or 30 seconds or something. <sighs> Excuse me. Uh, without it, eh, Bloodwig just, mm, eh. oh hey, there we go, level up. Um, if you did do the Bloodwing thing, the last skill is what really, really makes Bloodwing effective. Um, if you put five points into that, he starts attacking multiple targets, I think like six targets. That would be kind of cool and worth it, but that means you got to spend five, ten, fifteen, you know, twenty points getting Bloodwing to that point. And that's, uh, uh, I don't know if it's really worth it or not. Uh, Caliber I will get into eventually, Focus, I'm just going to put this point into right now because I feel like it, because I hate missing. Hey, Burning Psycho. Oh, I like this gun. Oh, I want to transfer it over. Uh, makes me want to talk in my Metal Gear voice. Uh, but we won't be doing that. I also like this gun. Because it is incredibly powerful. But it's only two shots. But it shoots lightning. And I enjoy shooting lightning. Fucking eat it. Oh my god, I love it. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Boom. Hey, dawn has come. Yay. I was worried it was a little bit dark for a recording, but hey, night cycles. Hey, you asshole with the shield. Oh, how did I miss you? Fucking eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, suck it, and in the ass. Oh, god damn it. Okay, I only get two trigger pulls before I need to reload with this one. Oh, you had an incendiary SMG, I thought so. Okay, you have a 16... Wait, I got three trigger pulls? Yeah. And then I have, like, one left over. Use a slightly bigger magazine, I think, but not a bad gun at all. Bird. Okay. Moving on into the bandit camp area. I think there's a... I don't know. I'm just going to keep shooting people. What? Oh, god damn it. I hate it when I go over their head by the narrowest margin. Fucking die already. Wait a minute. 130. Mice rifle. <laughs> 
My revolver does more damage than my sniper rifle. I love it when that happens, actually. Did I fix my grenades yet? Oh god, no, I'm still using transfusions. Hey, hey, come on, physics. Oh, wait a minute, aren't there more? Hey, hey, god damn it, physics. I think there's some more dudes over here. I must kill everybody. I don't feel good about myself until I've killed, like, everybody in an area. Oh, that felt good, too. Oh, look, and he dropped shock contact grenades. How ironic. No. That, wait, there's nothing up here? Oh, what about this building? No. Why the fuck did Chunky and Falange spend so... Or not Chunky, whatever. Shanks and Falange spend so much time in there if there's nothing in there. Right in the ass. Oh, it didn't kill him. That sounded like a rocket. Whoa, hello. There we go. Whoa, that is definitely a rocket. Whoa, that was almost my face. Oh, hey, one shot, one kill. Oh, fuck you, moving. Love this revolver. I don't think that can be stated enough that a powerful enough revolver with, it, uh, with an elemental proc is just basically the best thing in the game. You people and your, you know, double anarchy sirens and whatever the fuck you guys are talking about can suck my cock because this gun is awesome. Oops. That's a little bit. Whatever. Ah! What the fuck, Ninja Shot Gunner? Look, hey, look, when I shoot you, you die. There we go. That is how this game works. I shoot you, you die. I don't know if anybody has explained that to you, but your entire existence is basically here for me to kill you. Okay, now comes the tricky part of trying to figure out where the fuck you guys were. Oops. One second. Boom! Alright, uh, I think I was saying something about trying to find treasure chests or something. I think you guys said it was on this roof. And all last recording, uh, there was a failed test recording before this, and by test, I mean not really a test, but, uh, I'll just say it was to make my failure feel less bad. I mean, there's this guy, but there's supposedly one on the roof, and I never figured that one out. Ooh, grenades. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, a masher! Yes! Yay, a masher! Fuck yes. Oh, I gotta keep you. Um. Gotta keep you. Incendiary, that's too bad. You do a lot of damage, but don't have electricity on you. Okay, okay. Yay, I found a masher. That makes me very happy. Not a particularly good one, but it's the first one I've seen in the entire game, so I'll, you know, live with it. So I have no idea where this treasure chest is supposed to be talking about it being on Sledge's roof. Right. How much is this doing? 30 7. Eh, that's not bad. Alright, bug it. Maybe there is no. There's some trick to this, maybe? No. Can I jump out a window onto the... Alright. Alright, so you... You got replaced. Savage Viper, fuck off. I'll level SMG, don't care, don't care. Don't care, don't care. The rage, I'm so keeping. Oh, full. Okay, wait. Full. 
No! No, wait, wait, okay, transfusions. Can I jump out like a window to this place people are talking about? No, no I can't apparently. So it's on the roof. How the fuck would I get up here? I don't know, you guys are gonna have to post about that. Um, I wasn't able to figure it out. In this recording or the other one? This one is a brute, and he has a powerful shield you will need to whittle down before you can hurt him. Don't let him touch you. Now, for a message about, hey, you're about to fight a boss with a huge fucking shield or something, you'd expect that to be a core game mechanic. It's surprisingly not. I mean, he does have a big shield and it is pretty, but it's it's not really like a giant game mechanic about it. Um, you'll see. I'm going with ore today. I love Sledge. Uh, also, if you're observant, you notice you've seen Sledge before because uh, it was his face on the little data recorders in Skag Valley uh, for the quest, uh, Why Are They Here? That talks about why are the planets in uh, uh, Skag Valley. Stay away from that hammer. Do not throw your grenades. What the hell? Grenades. Grenades. Come on. That doesn't seem to be doing so much. Ooh, my health is kind of low. Don't let Sledge get too close to you and unload that shotgun at you. That shotgun really hurts, but it's incredibly inaccurate, so it spreads really, really fast. So if you can keep even just a mild amount of distance away from him, you're pretty safe, but if you see me getting knocked back, yeah, the shotgun has quite a bit of knockback on it. Oh, come on, die already. There we go. So here's Sledge's shotgun. It's brief loaded, slow as fuck. But then just absolutely kills things. Alright, now to clean up the mess. So there's the uh, the artifact. One sec, let me try to get the cache out of the way. There we go. It really just kind of appears to be this kind of rock cone that has blue gl glowing stuff on it. Just kind of underwhelming. It. it just kind of looks like a horn fragment or something to me. I bet you would like to know what that is. It's a horn fragment. The vault is real. What you are holding is the key that opens it. One part of it, anyway. So there we go, our first boss uh, defeated in our first, like, part of the key plot, or, you know, something like that. And now from a message from our local antagonist. This is Commandant Steele of the Atlas Corporation, Crimson Lance D Company, Third Star Born Brigade. I have just been informed that you have arrived on Pandora in search of the vault. And within minutes have started killing the locals and causing a disturbance. This planet is under the authority of the Atlas Corporation. And any Iridian artifacts found here are Atlas property. Possession of such property carries a stiff penalty. I invite you to turn yourself in at once to the nearest land outpost and surrender any information or artifacts in your possession. Consider this your one and only warning. 
So there is Commandant Steel of the Crimson Lance. We've seen their posters around. Uh, actually, the posters show up as early as uh, Firestone. Uh, so there really is supposedly some sort of Crimson Lance presence uh, on the planet. And uh, it's a name you might have been able to see or pay attention to before, which is kind of cool. I like that, you know, when it didn't matter, you still actually saw evidence of their existence. There we go. Now, the other thing about that conversation, though, that's actually a very terrible masher. I kind of don't like it. It's too slow. Um, the other thing that kind of gets me about uh, that message is that she claims that the planet is under Atlas Corporation's jurisdiction, or is Atlas's property, which is really kind of weird and at ends with um, my interpretation of Patricia Tannis' journals because, and the backstory that I know of the game. The backstory that I know, or uh, I'm thinking of with Patricia Tannis, is that uh, the planet actually belonged to Dahl. What the fuck? There. Uh, that uh, the planet actually belonged to the Dahl Corporation. Uh, the Dahl Corporation, as seen here with its logo on the garbage bin, kind of solidifying the idea that Dahl might be a slightly lower level or, you know, less important or... Uh, I don't know, just, you know, not as good as Atlas. And, in fact, even the diaries from uh, Patricia Tannis seem to suggest this, saying that, you know, Atlas found a whole bunch of uh, technology on a different planet called Prometheus, and that the Dahl Corporation seized uh, Pandora in hopes of finding similar technological breakthroughs. But then it's also implied that um, Dahl gave up after a number of years and just left. Uh, Patricia Tannis was kind of just left to fend for herself and abandoned. Hey, shut up, Scooter. I'm talking about, like, backstory and plot. Um, that... Oh, God, I hate you, Scooter, so much. Um, that Patricia Tannis was left behind to fend for himself, or herself, and that most of the physical labor being done on Pandora was done by escaped convicts. Uh, convicts that were left behind unattended and... Oh, shut the fuck up, everybody. Um... Oh my god, fuck you, Claptrap. I'm trying to have a conversation. That, um... That all the labor was done by convicts, and that when Dahl left, they just kind of hacked up and left and let all the uh, the convicts loose. Like, eh, fuck it, it's our planet, it's going to shit anyway, we don't care. Have fun. Um... That would explain why there's just bandits and raiders here everywhere. It's just that it's the entire population of the planet was like 80% bandit for like work camps. Or I'm making up the percentages, but that's kind of the impression that you get. Um, now, when they did leave, I don't know if that's to imply that Dahl gave up their claim on Pandora or not. And then now Atlas has moved in thinking, hey, okay, they fucked it up. Oh, hey, see, look, Crimson Lance. Um, but... It still just seems kind of strange that suddenly Atlas has uh, jurisdiction and Dahl has gone off and fucked off. Also, a cool thing about the um, things, your new U stations were made by Hyperion. And it's actually really cool seeing that um, all the other corporations that are kind of mixed into the backstory are actually out here in the world in a real game mechanic sort of sense. Um, I don't actually need to turn this into you, do I? Yes, yes, I do. I already put into Pierce to give you clearance on through to the doll headland. You ought to be able to reach New Haven now. So, uh, I might have actually talked over a little bit of that, but basically the important thing is that he's uh, talked to the governor or mayor or sheriff. Somebody in an authority to figure in the real city, like Firestone is a little crap town. Oh my god, Claptrap. Okay, uh, the important part of that conversation... Oh my god, Claptrap! ...was that, uh, he has found, uh, or he's talked to the sheriff of the real big city, New Haven. Uh, this is obviously a little shithole on the road, uh, and with population like seven or six or something. Uh, we're going to go to an actual city, and it actually kind of feels like a real city. And the uh, sheriff of that town has just given us clearance to go into the Doll Headlands, which is the next big zone, which is cool. And we will be going there, and it will be fun. I keep the medical equipment working. 
Uh, oh, see, not available in this, but we also, with the death of Sludge, uh, received a class mod. And these just do awesome extra things that normally you can't do. Like this one is going to give me team health regeneration and plus one to fast hands, which is unfortunate because I don't have any points in fast hands, which increases my reload speed. And I'm pretty sure I do not get the bonus unless I actually have a point in it. Feel free to post and correct me, but I'm pretty sure someone's already posted that that is how it works. <sighs> hey, look, more Crimson Lands. Anyway, so, um, there's my kind of rant. I hope some of it was informative, some of it was game mechanic-y. I do enjoy talking a little bit about the lore and background of the game. And this commentary has a much different feel than running around swearing with three of my friends. Uh, and by three of my friends, I actually mean two of my friends and Chunky. Um, so I've been Jade Star. Um, let me know if you guys like the solo style. I could do it as a complimentary thing, uh, or I could just uh, do it whenever we fuck something else up. Uh, anyway, I hope this has been good. Um, I'm going to put up a second video. I'm going to chunk these up into about half an hour things. There will be a second video where we go mop up all the resulting side quests of this. Like, I've got, what, six things to do here? Uh, and we're going to do one more in the next zone. So I've got seven more quests to do. Most of these are pretty quick. But that's going to be another video about 30 minutes. And I'll see you next time.